We have talked about how the church actually teaches us to hate ourselves, to hate God, and to hate others. Of course, they don't say it's hate. They even go so far as to call it love or tough love, which is all part of the gaslighting. But to those on the receiving end, it is hate. And when there is such a deep foundation of contempt, this underlying hate, what kind of vibe does that give us? How strong is our foundation? It makes us full of fear and easy to manipulate. And the church is very effective at that. They make it an easy jump to hate others, to justify rejection, condemnation, oppression, and marginalization. So what do we do? What do we do with all this hate? Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid someday? So I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? Well, hello and welcome to the Freed Hearts Podcast. My name is Robert Cottrell and I'm here as always with... Susan Cottrell. Hi there. Hi. How are you? Good. Well, we are the Feel Good Podcast of the Summer with all of our recent episodes about hate and stuff. So we're going to we're gonna try to <laughs> turn the corner a little bit here and talk about some other stuff and, and some, some positive stuff. Because in recent episodes, we have talked about how the church actually teaches us to hate ourselves and to hate God. And then all the oppression and marginalization and harm that comes from that. And then, of course, the natural jump to hating others. Of course, I mean, they don't say that it's hate. You know what I mean? They don't say that it's hate. They even go so far as to call it love or tough love or accountability or helping someone find their way in Jesus. You know, I could could go on and you don't want me to. Um, And that's all of that is all part of gaslighting. But uh, to those on the receiving end, beloved, it's, it is hate. It is hate. It's not accepting yeah. someone for who they are. Yeah. It would be the same thing as saying because you are left-handed, because your skin is a certain color, because your hair is a certain color, because your eyes are a certain color, because you look a certain way, because you are who you are. We don't accept you. We don't approve of you. We reject you from our community. That is hate. Yeah? Yes, exactly. It's interesting that no one calls it hate. (laughs) Like, the big no-no is to say you hate, but the words and the actions reveal it. Yeah, I mean, they they really have a vitriolic response to that when you call it hate. It's it's not hate, you know, but, but it is. It's us versus them. It is the teaching of contempt that is so foundational in the church that we have been talking about. And, and that's really the core of what we're deconstructing. Um, and beloved, when there's this underlying, just stay with me here for a minute. When there's this underlying hate of even the Bible, the hate of God, hate for ourselves, what, what, what kind of mood does that leave us in? You know what I mean? Yeah, where does it leave your spirit? Yeah, how, how, how strong then is our foundation, our belief in life, our hope? And it makes us really full of fear and therefore very easy to manipulate. Yes. And as I said, as I said it's such an easy jump, a quick jump to then hating others mm-hmm. and then to justify rejection, condemnation, oppression, mar- marginalization, while ignoring so much within the church, so much hypocrisy. So, beloved, today we want to ask the question, what do we do with all this hate? Because we don't want to stay here. What do we do with all this hate? Yeah. What do we do, Susan? What do we do? We begin by deconstructing it all. Deconstructing it all. Deconstructing it down to the foundations. This starts with admitting, with recognizing, and Mm -hmm. admitting that you feel this hate, and not to try to minimize it. Do you remember Paula Poundstone? Yeah. Well, she had that joke where she'd say, uh, the wages of sin is death, but after taxes are taken out, it's more like a tired feeling, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. And I thought, so this sense of hate, by the time we disclaim it and explain how we don't really hate anybody, it's just like a mild dislike. <laughs> <laughs> because hate feels like a, a really big word that nobody wants to own. We, we are happy to say, I hate broccoli. But we have a hard time saying, I hate my coworker. And I get that. But, you know. Well, uh, the Bible says, love your neighbor, not love your vegetables. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, that's not. <laughs> you a got story. me on the joke thing. So now <laughs> I realize I've not told jokes for a long, long time. You so haven't. I got to I got to gear up here so you can you can look forward to that or not or look not. forward to that <laughs> in future episodes. So I was once in a situation with this woman who had hurt a lot of people with her incompetence. And finally, a very smart higher up hired a team of, um, it was two women to come in and deal with the situation. And they interviewed each of us and for us to describe our experience with this woman and how we'd been affected. She'd really affected Mm. the whole, you know, business. And so I described with what had happened with me and I said, I hate her. (laughs) And one of the women said, that's a really strong word. (laughs) I said, I know, I have a strong feeling. It was a really strong hurt. It was a strong hurt. But I thought, if that word is not available in situations like this, I'm not sure where else I would use it. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm Sure. I'm, yeah. So, you know, it reinforces, I'm not saying it's the best word to choose always, but I'm just saying sometimes it's the word that describes your feelings. And it reinforces that we don't let us ourselves say we hate anybody, even when we do. Instead, maybe think of it this way. It's a strong word to express emotions we don't otherwise have a handle on Mm. or we haven't yet come to terms with. It reminds me of a a family friend of ours, and there's a little boy, he's four or something, and he would get so agitated and not know how to express it that he would say, I'm going to jump into a volcano. (laughs) Which, of course, distressed his mother to no end. It inflamed all her memories of childhood, of not being heard, etc. Well, the child, the child was just reaching for the biggest word they knew, the biggest expression mm. they knew of these feelings they needed to express. Uh, you know, the child it has no access to a volcano. And if, if they did, would not be jumping in. But... It was a way to express some big, overwhelming feelings. Yeah, big feelings, yeah. And it's like, you know, saying, I'm going to run away because you have nothing else available to grab in that moment. And it's okay to express yourself that way Mm -hmm. in in a safe place, even as you're aware that, you know, people really get bent out of shape with those words. You have to be careful that you maintain your own safety. But it's... Better to experience your hate, if only in your journal, Mm -hmm. so it can move through you and not get stuck on the walls as it flows through. Yeah, you know, yeah. what what we don't want here in this hate is to get stuck in it, to have it seethe and boil under the surface and and all of that. So there's a, to find a way to express that. And it helps to, as you said, to identify that. Mm Mm-hmm. It also helps to see beyond the hate and realize that it's, you know, it's, it's, and I don't mean to diminish the feeling, but it's only a feeling. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it is. And it's an expression of something that feels really threatening or disorienting, discombobulating. Nice you. word. <laughs> How many letters is in that? <laughs> I don't know. No idea. Just- <laughs> 15 probably. Um, but it doesn't have to consume you. That. Feeling doesn't have to consume you. To own it is the straightest way through it. Mm. But, it, you know, it's not set in stone. And our feelings feel set in stone. Yeah, They remain because we keep telling the same story about them. Yes. Yeah. We've had, I mean, we've, we've talked about this a little bit in the past, mm-hmm. but we've had people in our lives that we've interacted with that, that tell stories of something that has happened to them decades ago. Yeah. And the, the not, again, not to diminish what happened, right. but the, the action of what happened stopped decades ago. Yeah. But the impact on a person's life or this person's life, uh, the pain from it continues. Con- and they continues to be inflamed. Yeah, and they as they retell the story with all the details, uh, as if it happened that morning. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. And I think I think you're right. I think it, it doesn't. Again, we don't want this hate to consume us. It's easy. I mean, oh my gosh, we just we you and I had a little interaction this morning where we yes. talked about something 
And your reaction was, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Not, not yeah. towards me, but towards the situation. It's yeah, like, it was such an unjust situation. Yeah, and, and it was, uh, you know, and we don't want that hate to consume us. It's yeah. so easy. Yes. I mean, we're gearing up to. And you, and you said to me, yeah. it, it just throws the conversation. Like, it, whatever we were going to talk about with, about it, was then off track. Yeah. And it did, it really disempowers you yes. to provide your wisdom and, yeah. and your strength. And it just comes down to this, ah, you know? Yeah. And again, yeah, I, 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 I want to say, I don't want to diminish the feeling of the hate, but we don't right. want it to consume us right? to where it gets in the way of us sharing wisdom yeah. and being kind and loving and providing solutions to some of this moving through it. And that's the thing when you when you recognize it and admit it then it can move through you. It's when you pretend you don't. I mean, the most hateful people are the ones who say I don't hate anybody. I don't hate anybody. I have no animosity toward anybody. And they're hating in everything they do. Yeah. Toward those people. So Yeah. And so if you let go of the story the feeling yeah. dissipates. Yeah. Our, our grandbaby throws a fit every time we bring them in from outside. They love to be outside. They are a Pacific and, Northwest baby. Yes. And they know how to express their feeling of being distraught. And then they move on. And, you know, they see their mechanical puppy or their favorite book. And they can replace their anger then that they're no longer outside. So I don't, I don't mean distract yourself. And I don't mean to sublimate yourself. But it's more of a reminder that hate is a big feeling mm-hmm. and often justified, often justified, but that we can see beyond the distress with something bigger that's not yeah. defined by our hate yes. or other yes. big emotion. Yeah, hate, hate at times may be loud. The feeling of hate may be loud, but love is louder. Yeah. Love needs to be louder. Yeah. Love is bigger. And so not to talk yourself out of your negative feeling, but just have a bigger parameter around it. I think like, like the child, we, we do not talk our grandbaby out of their intense distress that we brought him inside, (laughs) but we hold the bigger picture that, okay, we're going to have snack. We're going to have your toys, whatever. And the, and the bigger part of you can hold the bigger picture. Yeah. Tell that story of of Tom Hanks and Mr. Rogers again, because sometimes oh. I sometimes I'll do that with with our grandbaby in the moment. Is yes, is I just hold them and I say, you know, it's okay, you're okay, We're, yeah, it's all good. And yeah. yeah, well, when he was doing the movie or had done the movie, Tom Hanks, he was he was babysitting his granddaughter, and um, the granddaughter woke up and mom was already gone, and and she said, "Where's mom?" And Tom Hanks said. Your mom went out for a while, but I'm here to keep you safe. He said, I, I learned that from the movie, from Mr. Rogers, and I thought, I'll try that. And the granddaughter just said, okay, and started playing. Yeah, like, that knowledge that she's, <laughs> that everything's okay, you're safe. There's uh, something bigger. There, there, yeah, there, there's something bigger than this in the moment. That doesn't yeah. discount what you're feeling in the moment. But And what we don't want to do the, is get so lost in this hate in the moment that, that we lose the hope. We we forget the bigger the bigger vision. Of, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, and you may feel in the moments of hate unsafe, like yeah. your whole world's falling down, but that's what the the larger you yeah. is there to hold the space for. Yeah. Um, so I read in psychology today. I, I prepare for you guys. <laughs> I I want to do us to really provide some content here that you can that can really have meaning in your life. So So I was reading in psychology today about what is hatred anyway, and it said hatred is driven by two key emotions of love and aggression. Hmm. And one, (laughs) love is for the in-group, the group that is favored, and two, aggression for the out-group, the group that has been deemed as different or dangerous or a threat to the in-group. And so when you pull back, for a larger view than just the binary of the in-group and out-group where we feel threatened, it can really help to get a larger picture. I hope that made sense. 
Yeah, that absolutely made sense. It, 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 when you talked about an, an in, in group, it reminded me that of the meme we shared recently that it's interesting that whenever someone says they heard from God that there's one chosen group of people, <laughs> it's just they just so happen to be in that group, you right. know, and how, right. can, how convenient is that? Right. So, yeah. Right. Um, so another thing I think is important with all this um, is that just stop caring so much about what others think about you. Yeah. You know, and in this world of likes and comments and dislikes and blocks and, oh my gosh, it just happens so much. We see it on our own posts and, well, and, and you have to just stop caring so much about what other, I'll tell you one, well, that's right. Um, yeah. Stop caring so much about what others think about you. you yeah. Know? And what, in this, in this day when it feels like you need side hustles to make it and, you know, you're, everybody's trying to be an influencer. They're trying to influence others. Well, that, that comes from being liked. <laughs> like it, it comes from getting fans. Yeah. Or that's and, necessary to, to be an influencer. Is to yes. Have, yeah. yeah. And many of our jobs, it feels like we need to be liked in order to perform our jobs. Mm. But we have to remember that they're just, they're just others' opinions and we can't live to those for our value. And, and really, if you step back from it, others' opinions of us are none of our business. They're really not. Yeah. And, and if we can, if you, here's where freedom comes from. And that's if you surrender the right to be universally loved. Realizing <laughs> that you are loved by the universe. The, <laughs> that was great. You're so loved by the that universe that you don't need to be universally loved. That's awesome. We should make a meme. <laughs> They're coming to you soon. (laughs) So there's a great story in um, the book uh, that he's just not that into you. Uh, The guy, the author of the book, I don't know if it was in the movie, but he said he broke up with a woman he'd been dating and she was really unhappy about the breakup, you know, whatever. Didn't want that to happen, but she didn't lose it. Didn't become a basket case. Didn't key his car, whatever. She just moved on with her life. And he said a few years later, He ran into her at a restaurant with friends and he said, she looked great. She looked, you know, beautiful. And she was talking to some handsome dude and she just kind of glanced at him like, oh, you, but there was no bad feeling or good feeling. Mm. Just was. And he said he was more drawn to her, her in that moment than at any other way she could have handled the whole breakup and, and the follow-up of it because you know, she, she just let it go and she'd moved on with her wonderful life. He could see that and hadn't been held back by their breakup at no. all. Yeah. Well, that's, that's and the, yeah, there's an inner radiance that comes from that. Exactly. The, the deep attraction that comes from that. Yeah. And that's really the best. And we've, I know you've heard this, I know we've said this, but that's, that's really the best response to a lot of the hate we receive out there. Even, even from really close family and friends is to live <laughs> your life, be happy, family and friends. I use those words lightly in that right, case, right. but be happy, live your life, let your life your authentic life, your radiance, your love-focused, affirming-focused life speak volumes. To some people, it will change them. Yeah. And some people will never reveal that to you because they don't want to admit that, that it's changed them. Yeah. But it will. Some it won't change, but it's not, it's not your thing. But it will, it will be a powerful witness to the world, uh, your radiance. And it'll be powerful for you. And for you, yeah. Freeing for you. Yeah. So, you know, that it's really available. This is really available to you that people may have hurt you badly. Mm. I, I, they, they reject you and when they should have accepted you and they blamed you for it and whatever happened, I'm not minimizing any of that. I hope you know that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, um, and I'm also saying, I don't doubt your right to feel anything you feel about them. You have the right to feel that way, but, but now what? Yeah. To try to get anything from them, even a small acknowledgement that they were wrong is going to trip you up. It will not produce what you hope. I have made that mistake. Yeah, can you I share that about your, that. Yeah. Yes, yes. You've, there have been a, a handful of times in the past where yeah. someone has wronged you or a situation or others in a situation and you feel... Yeah. And you and you craft an amazingly 
profound and moving letter to them. And, yeah. And, and you, and you feel led to send it off. Yeah. But the, where, where always tripped up was it was conditional because they had to respond for you to feel <laughs> heard. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You know, and heard is that's a heard, big issue yeah, for big, me. Yeah. And, and they yeah, had, would, they, they had to make a change and acknowledge the change and get it and, and say they were sorry or make the change or whatever in order for you to feel satisfied as yeah. opposed to just, you said, you, 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 you spoke your truth, <clears throat> you shared a resource you, and you sashayed, you sashayed away. away. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, yeah. So yeah, exactly. it, it did trip you up in the past. And I didn't say any of that, of course, to them. I just, I sent that off hoping that I would get some kind of, yeah. you know, validation back yeah, cause, and didn't. But you can't control that. That's control the thing. That. And that's the thing is you yeah. don't control that. And yeah. so, wow, you're giving your power away. Exactly. You're trying to produce something you can't produce and it will make you mo- more stuck to them. That's the thing. And at the effect of their thoughts and their actions. Mm. And as I'm telling you, I'm telling you from my own wounded heart that as long as you need their approval, whoever it is that's hurt you, or even want the smallest acknowledgement, they have you in their clutches. They have your power. They they hold your power. And, you know, you don't want to be a marionette <laughs> dancing to someone else pulling the strings. God, yes. nobody needs that. Yeah. We do not need that. That's a so, powerful image. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when you don't care what they think, you're free. And we think of, of hate as the opposite of love, but it's more the other side of the coin of love. The opposite is indifference. You, I'm sure you've heard that, but, you know, and we don't want to be indifferent to people we're in a relationship with, but. Those who uh, matter to us, yeah. Yeah, but, I, but it, it, certainly a good dose of indifference to the naysayers can really set you free. Yep, yep, yep. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And even with you, it, well, even with the ones in relationship that not hanging on to their response. Right. There's right. freedom in that, yeah. in just being you. Yeah, and the and the core to, to that, beloved, is to know how beloved you are. Yeah, you know, and any anybody that doesn't see that, it's their issue. It's not yours. Yeah, and so to kind of yeah to to separate yourself from what they think because you know who you are. Yeah. Um, okay, so another thing you can do. Yeah. With all this hate, is to really. Yeah dive deeper into the expanse of the universe. I mean, seriously, you know, of the expanse of God, yeah. spirit, universe, as a benevolent creative force of which you are spark. I love that. I love that image. We are, we are literally stardust. The, the scientists and the poets will tell you that. And we hold ourselves in contempt only because others or we think God holds us in, in contempt. And when we can expand our view out to the, to the collective stardust universe that we all are, it just makes, it just gives you a place. And you know that thing about if, the, if God is for us, who can be against us? Well, it's the opposite. If God hates us, who 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 can love us? Who can love us? How yeah. can we love us? Yeah. So, but but the universe loves us, and so we don't need to even think about that again. That's a done deal. So even if you're no longer invested, um, if God is just someone that you used to know, <laughs> I used to know. <laughs> get it straight. Get it straight that the bigger picture, the universe Whatever that is, loves you. you. Yeah. yeah, and dive into that love that's there for you, the benevolence yeah. of the universe toward you. Yeah. And these other things will just be much less important. Yeah, yeah. that's good. As they say, that's the good. universe loves you, let it. Yeah. Huh. And finally, you know, of course, the natural response to what do we do with this hate is we love. And we love others. And I know that the, the hate seems so big Sometimes that we get, we can get like stuck in, well, how do we love at such a level as, yeah. as the hate feels it is at out mm-hmm. there. But I've always felt that the best way to love is to start with the next person you mm-hmm. encounter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And we say this a lot, but that's 
how you be the love you want to see in the world. That's how you find freedom from wishing for something different that is not coming. And I want to, so we're going to wrap this up with me sharing something that's sacred to me. And it's from my angel journal. And um, that is my journal where my angels speak to me. It's very simple. And I'll tell you how to, how I do it in case you want to do it. I just, I have a three ring or a spiral notebook. And I just write my thoughts or questions for my angels. It can be just a sentence or two. They know. <laughs> and then I begin to write whatever answer comes to me. And it turns out to be profound wisdom and comfort. And my angels answer me. So it's been a profound source of wisdom and support and encouragement to me. And I highly recommend it. And by the way, your, your angels answer you very often in a way that you would never have answered. You. Oh, yes. Yes. It's like, well, that wasn't. You yes. Know, that's, it's like, where'd that come from? Yeah. 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 Even trying to write something recently, I was kind of stuck and I just angel journaled about it. I was like, oh, this, 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 this great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So this, I wrote this February 3rd. I was distraught over the state of injustice in the world, kind of hating everybody maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and the injustice in the world and in our country. And I just poured it out to my angels And I I wrote, my loves, I need your wisdom on this roiling anger I have toward our system of injustice, the economic inequity, the barriers to people expressing their full humanity. Yes, I know the human spirit can survive, even flourish in the hardest circumstances, but I resent how much harder it is for so many people because of laws and advantages to the privileged. Help me see your perspective. So that's what you wrote? That's what I wrote. Okay. How did they answer? And then I just, <laughs> I started writing their answer, and here's what they answered. Dear girl, yes, your vision of, for humanity, is much more beautiful than is being played out now in this world's theater. So many more hurdles than we would want for a world that works for everyone. We love your heart for the marginalized and hurting, the very heart of Christ. Your role, sweet beloved, is to keep loving where you are, keep giving where you can, and be at peace with things as they are, or you will not be at peace. You must accept things as they are, or you find yourself swimming upstream. Help where you can, love where possible, and envision a world of peace and love and equity. Envision the world you imagine, or imagine the world you envision. Create it in your mind. That has power. Anger at things as they are does not change them. Anger is a good catalyst for the changes you can make, but not those you can't. Accept what is because what you resist persists and because it's the way to peace. Hating what is gives you no peace. You can make the changes needed that you're able to make, which you are doing. But don't waste your life force on what you cannot change. Visualize the beautiful outcome you can see. Love people and be the helper Mr. Rogers talked about that makes a contribution. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the entry. And I'm telling you, it gave me so much peace and so mm-hmm. much empowerment. Well, let me ask you a question uh-huh. here on this quickly is that I don't want except what is sounds a little bit like, well, Okay, I you know I accept what it is, but that but how I hear it, and mm-hmm. you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but accept what is 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 simply so instead of going oh damn it they're always doing this it's just kind of or acknowledging what is, mm-hmm. and then you can find the 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 power to move beyond the the anger or move through the anger about it to do things that can make a change. Is that right? Do I have that right? Yes, yes. So if you suddenly find yourself in a, in a really dangerous situation and you're about to be assaulted or whatever, and suddenly you're on high alert, you kind of have two options. You can say, this is so wrong. This is so I unfair. See, I see, yeah. I can't, uh, can't believe you're going to do this to me. Or, or you, yep, you can good. say, oh, my God, I see what he's planning. 
I need to do. Um, so, yeah. I, my my, I've got chills right now thinking because you're looking now. Where where's an exit? What can I do here? And that's that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah that's good. So accepting what is means it's not though he's he's I mean, going to kill me. It, seeing it's a, seeing it for what it is, so that then you can take action. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Thank okay. you for that. Sure. And the one final thing that we say a lot is that don't get drawn in in to the debate. Don't debate people who are who are committed to misunderstanding you. It can be toxic for you. Yeah. And it can just be a, um, a deadly, toxic, psycho rabbit hole yeah. that you're drawn down and is just into. And and if they don't have ears to hear, you know, they're, there's nothing you can do about that. So that's mm-hmm. where when you find yourself in that, you sense that you, you speak the truth, share a resource and sashay away in all your <laughs> sparkly beautifulness. <laughs> sparkly beautifulness. That's a word now. I love it. I love um, it. <laughs> because your, your time, your energy is better used loving those who have been so hurt by this false, hateful, religious teaching. So yeah. instead of debating those who are committed to misunderstanding you, you know, again, share that truth, speak a truth, share a resource, sashay away, and go love someone that really needs to be loved. That's awesome. I know you're wrapping this up, but let me share a sure. resource real quick. Um, those things I just said that, that of accepting things as they are, mm-hmm. you can read um, Gavin De Becker. The gift of fear. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good if you're. It's if a book. Book called the gift you. of fear by Gavin D. Becker. It's it's the yeah. most impactful book I perhaps have ever read. Yeah. Okay. Well, the contempt, the hate, can be loud. We know that, and we certainly know that. We're hearing it every day, but maybe we can make the love louder. So <laughs> we love you. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid? Someday, so I call you up and you call me down, would it be okay? You've been listening to the Freed Hearts Podcast. We have extensive resources and vibrant, inclusive community for you at freedhearts.org. Please just come say hello. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions for the podcast, just email us at podcast at freedhearts.org. Audio engineering is provided by Luke Johnson. The music is provided by Hannah Cottrell, our daughter, the Grammy-nominated Saint Sinner. You can find out more about her and her music at heystsinner.com. Please share, subscribe and follow on your favorite platform, and support us if you can. Thanks for listening.